Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? It is Thursday evening. You guys are live here on the Dixie Bell page with Brush by Brandy. My name is Brandy. I am a Dixie Bell paint brand ambassador, and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can find me right here. I rarely miss one unless it's a holiday or something's going on. So we are live here tonight. Um, you guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions while we paint with you guys. So if you have any questions, pop on and let us know. We're going to talk about the silk line tonight because it's a new line of paint from Dixie Belle and it's completely different than the existing line of paint. So I really want to um, help people learn and feel comfortable. Um, it, the, the line was just released in the United States yesterday. Um, and so I got a lot of questions yesterday. People want to know what's different about it, how to use it. So we're going to go through a project using silk basically from start to finish, but we're going to do it, you know, in a live fashion. So let's jump in and get started. This is the piece that I'm going to work on. So these are a pair of nightstands. They're made by Bassett. They are solid wood. So when you're starting a paint project, you always want to evaluate for two things. Number one is my project solid wood. What You need to know what you're painting on. What are you painting on? Because that's going to determine how you start your project. I know these are solid wood. If it is a glass, plastic, laminate, your laminate countertops, um, you know, your tile backsplash, anything like that, you need to put slick stick down on your piece first. Um, because I know this is solid wood, I can skip the step of slick stick. It's not going to hurt anything if you use it and you didn't need it, but I don't need slick stick on these. Slick stick is a gripping primer from Dixie Belle. Um, so I said you need to evaluate two things. Once you know what your surface is, you need to evaluate for do you need a primer. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, next, do I need a coat of Boss on it? Um, Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer. Because I'm using the silk line, I'm using the silk line, which does have a built-in primer that's equivalent to about one coat of Boss. So if you've got your really stubborn, stubborn bleeders, you're painting an old mahogany piece, you're still going to want to use Boss, your stain blocking primer, because those old tannins can seep through your wood. Um, and even though this has a, a stain blocker in it, I mean, you guys know how stubborn some of those can be. So even if I was painting old mahogany or something with silk, I would still go ahead and use my Boss. That's not the case here. I'm going to be fine with the protection that I'm given from my um, silk paint. So I know I can go right into um, to getting this ready for paint. I don't need to prime it or anything. The look that I have planned for this, um, I also need to know what look I have planned. Because if I'm painting a white, my prep is going to be different than I'm using a um, I'm using silk in Hampton Olive, which is this rich olive color. And so uh, my process might be different if I was painting a super light color. But I'm using this. Um, these had knobs on them before, and I love the separation of these drawers. I feel like it gives the look of maybe an old lateral filing cabinet. Can you guys see that? Um, and so I bought these label poles, and I'm going to change out the hardware. And I'm going to put these on here. These are all going to be painted, by the way. Are you going to put a piece of paper in there that's like A through G? Yes, or? yeah. So I'm people checking. know, if this is your nightstand, you cannot put... Like your book cannot go in this drawer. It's got to go in the B drawer, you know? Pretty serious about this stuff. Okay, so we're going to change the hardware out. So what I did on here is I filled my hardware holes with Dixie Mud. A few tips on when you're filling your hardware holes with Dixie Mud. I always overfill my holes a little bit because the mud, when it dries, it shrinks a little bit. And so I overfill the hardware holes. And then when I sand it, I sand it very lightly with a padded abrasive because it sand, um, mud sands really quickly. So if you use something that's got kind of a spongy feel to it, you're not going to sand through it as fast. You have more control. That way I make sure that I don't recreate the pit in the mud where my hardware holes were. They're nice and even with the front of my surface. You can't tell that they're there. That's my pet peeve when you can still see the divot for the hardware even though you filled it. Okay, so I filled my hardware holes. Let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I prep these for silk. Okay. Now, anytime you've got a factory finish on these, a lot of these factory finishes are oil-based factory finishes. It's very common. Um, and water-based paints like silk do not like oil-based finishes. So what I need to do is the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start off, I'm going to clean this because I don't know who's used it how much pledge they've used on it for the last 10 years, who knows. So I'm gonna clean it. I'm using Dixie Bell White Lightning. Um, it's a granulated 
formula that I dissolve into a spray bottle of water and then I can reuse it over and over and over and over again. I've got my cleaner there, it's all labeled. Okay, so my piece is nice and clean. With silk, on surfaces like this, you wanna scuff sand your finish. It's got nothing to bite onto. The primer that's built into your silk is not a gripping primer. This needs to be scuff sanded. I need to make sure it gets nice and dry. I don't wanna to try to scuff sand a wet surface. Okay, and so scuff sanding doesn't mean, I'm not trying to get through the finish. I shouldn't see any bare wood peeking through when I'm done scuff sanding. That means you've done it too hard. A scuff sanding is just a single pass to take down the sheen um, of what you're working on. And what works really good for this, these are the Surf Prep Rad Pads. These are available from Dixie Bell. Or these are the sanding sponges also available from Dixie Bell. So you just need a light abrasive. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Rad Pad. This is the red one, which is a, it's a very fine, they come in four grades in a combo pack. But this is plenty. Can I take you a step back just real quick? Yes, you can. When you're filling a hole in the drawer with Dixie Mud, what yes. do you do to the inside? Um, you, you have a couple choices. You can take the inside, put a piece of painter's tape on the inside, and you can fill the mud all the way through till it runs into the painter's tape. Um, I usually don't even go that far because it's the inside of my drawer. Let's see. I'll show you guys the inside. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way through, but I do pack it enough that it's probably about midway through that hole. I promise you guys, nobody's ever going to look in that hole and see how full it is. Oh, I am now. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen. But if you wanted to, you could just put a piece of painter's tape there and you could fill it till it's flush with the back of your of your drawer. It's the back of a drawer though. So don't sweat the small stuff. You know, quality is always, always really important to me, but also, paint, you know, not overworking. Like painting the backs of pieces, I never, I don't usually do that either. Okay, you wanna clean before you scuff sand because otherwise if I had pledge or finger grease on this piece or whatever, sanding it, I would've just ground all that right back into my wood. So that's why I cleaned it first. And now I'm gonna come back and I need to rinse the sanding dust. And I'm also gonna rinse off the cleaning residue that might be on here from my cleaner. Okay, so that was just water. I'm just spraying it down. So I did my, I cleaned my piece. I scuff sanded it. I just took the, the gloss, the sheen out of the finish on this factory finish. And now it's ready to accept paint. It's not a lot of work, you guys, but that scuff sanding is gonna be really important with your silk paint to make sure that it adheres properly. Okay, so now I can go ahead and apply my silk. And wait till you guys see how this stuff goes on. First, I'm gonna find my brush, okay? Um, a good quality synthetic brush is recommended when you're applying silk paint. Natural bristle brushes. Natural bristles are these. They're, they're boar's hair. They're made from a natural fiber. Um, they will leave texture in your paint. And the whole point of silk is where it really shines. Is it, is the, it lays super smooth with this low reflective sheen on it. And so to get that super smooth finish, you don't want to use a brush that's going to give you a lot of texture. So forget your natural bristle brushes, your chip brushes. That is not what you want to use. A good quality synthetic brush. This is the Dixie Bell Mini that I'm going to use. Um, for the chalk mineral line that we're also used to using from Dixie Bell, they recommend a damp brush. Water is not recommended for use with silk. So a dry brush is what you're going to start with. So my brush is completely dry. And I like to paint with the chalk mineral line with water. With silk, you're not gonna use water. So this little guy right here that I love so much, he's not gonna come out today. That's gonna be a new thing to get used to. Um, so I dip my brush into my silk. I probably fill it with more paint than I do with the chalk mineral line because I'm not using that water and I've got a, um, I've got a dry brush. I'm relying on the moisture from the paint to spread my paint. So I'm gonna fill my brush a little bit more than I would if I was using the chalk mineral line. And then I can start just brushing it on. I'm gonna go all the way top to bottom, making sure my brush strokes are nice and smooth, not stopping anywhere in between. I'm gonna get underneath this lip up here. 
One of your new nicknames, oh, Mistress no. of the Mini. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'll take that for sure. It's my favorite brush by far, you guys. And I'm I... still stuck on the fact that you said that there's a boar's hair. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. feel bad for the guy that's got a trap. Yeah, he, and hang on. There's a guy, one yeah, guy. One he guy. Catches all the boars. You had one job. Yeah. He shaves them <laughs> and sets them free. It's very humane. <laughs> no, that's a very common thing for um <laughs> for paintbrushes to be made out of is boar's hair. So most hmm. of your natural bristle brushes are made from you know, like their little back wiry hairs. I know. See, now you want to get a synthetic no. brush, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just sold 500 of those. <laughs> so what color is this that you're so putting So this in? color is called Hampton Olive. And I love this color because I would say of all the colors in silk, this is one we don't have anything that's super common in the chalk mineral line. The closest color to this in the chalk mineral line is um i got it out it's spanish moss but it's still a shade off it probably looks the same here but it's um hampton yeah. olive is darker can you can you tell no me you looks yeah. the same. everybody the same. on camera <laughs> yes sean no greenish brown yeah <laughs> it's this so i kind of like it for this look that i'm going for because when I say like old lateral filing cabinet you think of kind of industrial like maybe it's a little bit worn um you know, it would have been in someone's office. That's the look I'm going for on these. And so I think this color is perfect for it. I'm going to try to get down here without painting on to... Please. Like I did that. Do you see that? That was impressive. Mm. Okay, let's go ahead and do the front drawers of these. So that was that was one coat. That was really fast. Um, these I've already scuff sanded. I filled my holes here. These are ready to be painted. So even though I'm not showing you the cleaning and the scuffing process on here, I've already done it. Um, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a white haze over the top of my finish. That's because of my scuffing. So I can dip right into my silk. Again, I, I feel it probably, I think, a little heavier than I do with the chalk mineral line. But I'm going to, I want to show you guys something. So do you take a chance of overworking this paint? That's what I wanted to show you. That's oh, sorry. Timing. No, I'm actually, I'm glad you said Good that. Good job, Cindy. Nice transition. You're reading my mind. Okay, most, a lot of these paints, um, this style of paint you have to worry about overworking the paint so i'm gonna let's let this hang out for a minute and i'm gonna show you guys i can come back and you probably have a good five minutes with it and if i compare that to other brands that are similar to this line um you don't even have that like you get one brush and then you better walk away from it because if you touch it again it's going to get brush strokes so kind of just uh capping on this as far as why someone would choose dixie bell over so great question for me it comes down to really one thought it comes down to one thought what's the look i'm after what's the look i'm after silk does smooth even solid color finishes i mean you could you could get a little fancy with it but um it just does that really refined look really well that's where it shines it's not your blending paint it's not your drippy paint it's not your uh, you know, vinegar techniques, those kinds of things are not going to be where silk shines. This is going to be your really refined, smooth, even finishes. When you want to blend, we have the best blending paint already. I will not blend with silk because it's not a blending paint. That's not what it's meant to do. Um, and I love a good blend, but um, we already have the best blending paint out there. We have our the chalk mineral line. So when I want a clean, smooth, even finish, I'm going to choose silk. When I want blended, drippy, multicolor, um, artistic finishes, I'm going to choose the chalk mineral line that I can use. I can use it with water and water is how you do a lot of those techniques. Okay, so this has been sitting for a minute. I can still brush through this and it's going to be fine. Okay, you have a few minutes of playtime. A little gunk right here. You have a few minutes of playtime. That would never happen. What I just did would never happen with the most similar competitor line to silk. You could not even touch, you, like you brush through it and you leave it. This, I, I can come back and I've got a good few minutes that I can really come play with it. Daniel said he just used this exact color 
Yeah. And silk. What do you think? And he's in the UK. He said loves it. Yeah, it's a great color. I'm I'm excited for this color. I, there's a few colors. Um, another one. So my favorite colors that are out there are. I grabbed another one. I'm gonna use it. We're gonna do a little bit of decorative finishing on this. Is black sands. It's like a charcoal gray, a true charcoal gray. It's one. That's one of my favorites. I love serenity, which is like vintage duck egg. Those are at the top of my list. I think. Okay, let's go ahead and do this bottom drawer right here. So misting ahead of time? Nope, you don't use this paint with water. That's gonna be a learning curve for everybody because we're so used to using the chalk mineral line with water. This is a completely different formulation. So your chalk mineral habits break up. Don't go into it, think you're using Dixie Bell, even though that label says Dixie Bell on it. It is a completely different makeup. When you guys go out and you shop for paints, no two paint formulations are the same. There's other brands out there. They all have different strengths and weaknesses because they're made of different things. And silk is made completely different than the chalk mineral line. So this is not a paint you would use with water. Kind of behind the scenes, I'm checking Wi-Fi or MiFi, I should say. No, we're good. Everybody or certain people are complaining a little fuzziness. So. Okay, so that's one coat of my silk on. The second coat is gonna be basically a repeat of that. So let's set this one aside, set this nightstand aside. Now this side here, once it starts setting up and I can see that it's starting to get some dry spots in here, um, I'm not gonna brush through it anymore. Once it starts setting up, leave it alone. That's when you need to stop playing with it. But you do have a good few minutes that you can play with the paint. Dana, I think you're right. It probably was, sorry, it was the lines in the the front of the piece, I think, that makes it blurry. Oh, Because we've discovered that before with like the yeah. mini blinds or anything like that. You get in the way. If we, if I'm doing like a striped pattern or anything on a paper or anything, uh, it doesn't like those for some reason. So let's turn this. This has a dry coat of silk on here. Now, people have asked, do you need to sand between coats? I really feel like that's a personal preference thing. It's not going to hurt anything if you do. Um, you can run your hand over it and does it feel, this is pretty smooth. Like... There's I'm going to throw you a curveball. What about exterior applications? Yes, yes. This is the paint you would want to use. It's UV resistant, you guys, and it's mold and mildew resistant. So you can use it on your patio furniture. And that UV resistance means it's going to resist fading. Um, if you put anything out in the sun for long enough, even outdoor products, eventually they fade. But this has a, UV, a layer of UV resistance that it will give you some resistance to that fading. So I just brushed over it single pass, watch, one time. I feel a slight difference. It's not a whole lot. Maybe I had a couple, you know, a little bit of dust in there or something. But um, I would say that's totally optional. Oh. It's, it's not gonna hurt anything. This paint actually sands really, really well. Some of these, uh, I, I say competitor brands because that's what I am comparing it to. Um, you can just... <laughs> Sorry, I'm giggling because Sheila asked if you could put it in a jail setting. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I mean, if you're able to sneak it in in like a cake or I don't, something. I don't think that's what, yeah. yeah. If you have a friend that makes cakes for prison. Or or maybe got kicked out of something. <laughs> yeah. Some program. <laughs> so, uh, what Sheila is referring to, you guys, is I'm currently in Facebook jail. <laughs> I'm in Facebook jail. What Facebook jail is, is when Facebook locks your account out because you did something wrong. So I'm completely locked out of my Facebook account. So if you've been talking to me on my page, I can see Forget everything. Forget about it. But I can't talk yeah. to you at all. I responded to a few from Sean's account earlier, but I'm still locked out yeah, of my Yeah, thanks account. for that. My offense. Who wants to know what my offense is? You guys are going to laugh at this me, offense. Me, me. So this is, I, this is super smooth. I feel a slight difference. I, I would still I would still do that little brush sanding. I do it with the chalk mineral line. I would still do it just because I can feel with my hand the difference it makes, but test it for you. Um, I'm, it's not necessary. It's a personal preference thing. And then I just wiped away my dust and I'm gonna brush my second coat on same way, no water. Nice, smooth brush strokes. The paint is self-leveling. So if you give it a reasonably good start with your synthetic bristle brush, the paint is going to self-level itself. Self-level itself. Okay, has anybody asked me oh. what my offense is? No, but uh, apparently uh, someone over there at More Treasure says you talk too much. Oh. Yeah. Well. How about that? Sorry about that. When I'm teaching, I usually try to talk. 
<laughs> it, um, it actually comes in handy. There's a lot to learn from hearing and a lot to learn from actually doing too. So we try to do a little bit of both. Um, so I'm putting on my second coat just like I did with the first. Let's go into your offense. Oh my offense. You guys ready to be offended by this? It's pretty offensive. Plug your ears. Okay. Uh, I had, I, there was a, a follower and she was having trouble with her photos. And so I took her photo and I edited it a little bit to help her out. And I gave her back the photo and she said, what did you use? And I answered with the app that I use, which is called PicMonkey. That's the, uh, the name of the app. Okay. I answered with PicMonkey immediately. It didn't even go to Facebook. I was blocked for saying PicMonkey. Two words, PicMonkey. So. If you are on Facebook, do not ever speak of pig monkey. I'm going to do this little lip down here. That was my offense. That, that was literally how quick it happened. And because they considered it my second offense, I'll tell you guys what my first one was too, because it's pretty comical too. I love it, Brittany. <laughs> Murder was the case of the game. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Um, so my first offense was back in November, and... Well, I think your first offense was almost 20 My years ago. My first offense was yeah. just starting a Facebook account. Getting married to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely offensive. Um, my first offense was in November, and I uh, posted a jewelry box, right? I painted and posted a jewelry box, and they said it was drug paraphernalia. So. Well. Yeah. I mean, it's a stretch. You know. So then they came back and they forgave that first one, but then they still considered it in my punishment for this time. They're still saying, because you have two offenses, I get a longer sentence this time. I was like, what? Whatever, guys. I'm so over it. So I will not be back on Facebook until my sentence is over, which should be tomorrow. <laughs> What's done is done, right? So I've got my second coat on here. It's beautifully smooth. Um, the few brush strokes I have as this paint dries, it's a lit, you know, it's going to just kind of level itself out and I'm going to get this beautifully smooth finish, but I want to decorate this up a little bit. I'm not just going to leave it. So let's talk about adding in some other things to, you know, you don't have to use this as just one solid color. You can still decorate it a little bit. I'm going to come over here to this side that's already dry. And let's put some accents on here. What would you use to decorate this if you wanted more than just your basic solid color finish? You can still use the Dixie Bow product. I can still use, we're gonna use some Dixie Dirt. <laughs> Which mine has cobwebs it's on it. It's actually got dirt on it. <laughs> I pulled this out a while, apparently. We're gonna use Dixie Dirt. We're gonna use some uh, dark wax. You can, we're gonna shade with some paint. So I can take, you can mix your silk paint with each other and make custom colors. If I wanted to make a custom color out of these two, I could, as long as they're in the same line of paint. I do not want to mix my silk paint with my chalk mineral paint because they're two completely different formulations. It would be like mixing, I don't know, two completely different formulations. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's what it's like mixing like. two different things. <laughs> so you can mix within the silk line and you can create custom colors. I can layer. There's a difference between layering and mixing. If I wanted to come back and I wanted to stencil over the top of this in my chalk mineral line, I definitely could do that. I can layer them, but not putting it in a bowl, stirring it together, mixing. So let's go ahead and put some color in here. So, so let me throw a couple things at you real quick. Number one, the brush that you're using. Yes. And number two, your color that you were using. Okay, so my brush that I'm using is the Dixie Bell Mini. This is one of the Dixie Bell brushes. They are currently sold out online, but here's what I'll tell you. A lot of the retailers have them. The retailers um, get oh, get first dibs at ordering them, so they have, they have stock of these right now, even though they're not available online. So here's the secret with the Silk Line. It's not available online either. It's not available through the Dixie Bell website. You have to find your local retailer um, on the website, they'll be marked as Elite. So Elite Dixie Bell retailers currently have the Silk Line in there. They can or they could order as of yesterday. So some are still getting it in their shipping, but some have it in their shops right now. But you cannot order this online for another six weeks. So you have to find your local retailer. They probably have a brush too. Okay, but I'm going to use um, 
I'm gonna use a little bit of paint. We're gonna shade. I'm gonna shade in this crevice right here. Is this one okay? Can you see down here? This is here. <laughs> <laughs> can you see down here? I'm about to. Okay. We're gonna shade with a little bit of paint. So I'm gonna take. I am gonna take my natural bristle brush because I'm gonna make this kind of grungy. I want a little bit of texture. I'm gonna use my silk paint. We're going in. Yeah. Come down here. And. I would, I would never use this for a blending paint, but I'm gonna kind of make these colors, I'm gonna work them into each other a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of my silk. This is black sands down here. And I can just kind of darken this up. I'm gonna swirl it in. And then instead of using water like I would normally use to kind of soften this line right here, I'm gonna take a little bit of my base color paint in the Hampton Olive, and I'm gonna swirl that back in. And I'm just using the moisture from the paint instead of using water, and I can kind of swirl them together. And I get that, I get that shaded effect that I might get with like a blend, but I'm not truly blending it because I'm just using the moisture from the paint and I'm just kind of swirling the two colors together. So you can get decorative finishes with this paint. Most definitely, it's actually- Again, no water. No water, no water. This is not your water paint. This is not the one you want to mix with water. I'm going to tip this up a little bit so you guys can see it better, what I'm doing. Oh man. These are heavy. You know, I just painted that wall. I know. You're going to need to do it again. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat the process here. So what I did is I just took a little bit of my black sands and I'm digging it into this crevice because I want to darken this crevice. I want to make it look like it's got dirt in it that has sat there for a few decades. I'm just going to kind of swirl it in there. And then I'm going to come back with my Hampton Olive. Just a little bit. I don't have too much paint on there. Let me get a little bit more because all I'm using is the moisture from the paint. I'm not adding water. And then I can smooth this in and this just kind of softens it as it goes up into the Hampton Olive on the rest of the body. But it's not a perfectly smooth blend. It's more of a dry brush technique. I'm using just a dry synthetic brush and I'm just swirling the colors together. Could you use waxes on top of this? Yes, you can. We're gonna do that too. We're gonna use some waxes. I'll turn this to, uh, to <laughs> another side. Thanks, Misty. <laughs> 20 coats of gator hide on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yeah, that's all you need. Yep. So that gave me a nice shaded effect there, just using a, a low, a contrasting paint color. I just took the black sands. And I'll do it up here at the top too. I have a pretty. How about patina paints? Yes, you can definitely what? use your patinas over this. All of those products are totally friendly to this. So you could put, I could put patinas over this. I'm not going to do patinas on it tonight. But we are going to use some other products. I'll turn this to another side. So same thing. I just put a little bit of my black sands up there. I'm going to come back with a little bit of my base color, which is the Hampton Olive, and just soften that up. So the, I mean, the paints work, work into each other really well. I'd hardly call this a blend. This is far from my smooth, beautiful blending paint, but I can work the colors together. That's not a problem at all. I might have you get my heat gun. Maybe I'll keep working on this side. You gotta do something. I know you're gonna have to That's get out. It's not in my contract. You're gonna have to get out of your recliner, this is crap. your lounge chair over there. Oh my gosh! I gotta put the mojito down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being a fan with tea leaf, like. <sighs> I'm gonna dry this down here, and we'll put some different products on here too. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know what you think I do around so here? I'm just gonna put a heat gun on this to dry my paint. What do I think you do around here? Well, yeah. Now you sound like my manager, not just my boss. <laughs> okay, if you are in a, um, temperature and humidity can affect the dry times of your paint, you guys. That's just a fact. We are, uh, right now in California, it's wet, it's been raining, my paints are taking far longer to dry. That's going to be the case with your silk. So be patient with it. If you're in a, a wet, moist climate, it's gonna take a little bit longer for your paint to dry. But that's a really pretty line right there. I really like that look. It just looks a little bit aged down at the bottom. So I'm gonna take um, some Dixie Dirt. And what you use with your Dixie Dirt 
is you put a little bit of clear wax on there. Oh, that's a good job idea. I should be the guy that goes and chases the boars down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they need that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need a relief guy. Huge, huge demand. Okay, so I can put a little bit of my wax on here. This is just clear wax. I'm going to work it in a little bit. Um, you use clear wax with your Dixie dirt because that's what the dirt embeds itself into. It needs something to stick to because it's a dry dirt. It's a dry dust. And then I can take my Dixie dirt, which is a powdered formula, and a brush. Well, I see you have 17 Wait. screwdrivers, so. <laughs> yeah, that's my little caddy there. So this is Dixie dirt and charcoal. This is my favorite color of the dirt. It's the darkest color. Um, and you just dip your brush into the dirt, just a little bit, and then you kind of tap it off and let the loose dirt fall. And it's still got a little bit in the brush. And then I can brush it right into that wet, that new fresh wax. So what this does, it's not going to look a whole lot different than the um, dark paint that I put in there, but it just darkened it even more. I just layered the product for an even darker effect. And then I can wipe away any loose dirt. And then when that wax cures, it's going to cure with the dirt inside of it. I think Dawn's thing. cheating on us and, and has us uh, mistaken for two other people. She says that we're too cute. <laughs> <laughs> I will 100% take, take that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to oh. dry this paint up here. We'll do the same thing with the dirt up here. I'm going to put a little bit in this crevice down here too. Um, you guys, this side only has one coat of paint on it. So ignore that it looks a little light right here in the center. This only has one coat of paint on it. But I'm using it because I wanted to show you some decorative finishes over the base coat of the paint. So same thing. I dried my paint. I'm going to take a little bit, just a little bit of clear wax. Barely any. Just to, I don't, I'm not trying to seal my paint in this case. I'm just trying to give my Dixie dirt something to stick into. Get it into that crevice where I want the dirt. Let me get it down a little bit further. So what's nice is even though I'm putting this stuff on here, all, the Dixie Belle waxes are water-based, so I can come back and still put my second coat over this. Dip my brush into my Dixie Dirt. What I mean by that is it just lets me play around even though I, I'm not done painting this piece. And I can put a little bit of dirt right into the crevice. And it dripped down over there. You can put dirt on uh, dry paint too. So what I mean by that is if I don't use any wax on here. Hey, I just want to throw this out there. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes I wish we were in Florida too, when it's too cold here. Yeah, it's been bad lately. I was freezing the other night. So I just put a little bit of dirt on the, my dry paint. It doesn't have anything to embed into though, you guys. So like if I come back, if I don't seal over the top of this, if I come back, you know, after 10 years of dusting, I'm probably gonna work that dirt away. So if you do something like that over your dry paint and it doesn't have anything to embed into, you probably wanna seal this. You can seal your silk. It's not required though. It wipes really, really well. So, um, but if I'm gonna do a decorative finish like that, I probably wanna seal it in with something and I'm doing that for the decorative finish, not for my silk. So, and then another example would be your dark waxes. Uh, let me find a brush for this. So this is black wax. I'm going to put a little bit into this crevice right here just to kind of deepen the crevice. But these are all accent options. So even though silk really shines at doing smooth, clean, even finishes, you don't have to leave them plain. So a little bit of black wax. I'm going to kind of shade around. And get oh, dang, Stacy. New York, 46 inches of snow this year. Whoa. So I love shading with waxes. I'm gonna do the same thing down here, kind of around this apron. I'm just gonna swirl a little bit of dark wax on here just to darken up my edges. So all these tools you have, you can play with them and layer them on top of your silk paint and they work just fine. And then I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that back off just so it kind of smoothly goes into my... And that gives me like this nice, soft, darkened edge on this piece that's supposed to be kind of grungy, kind of dirty, a little bit used. Just was yeah. painted. Yeah, just, you know? yeah, yeah, brand new. I no big the deal. Into it. I'm going to do this line right here too. I put the dirt on there, but I think this will show up a little bit better. I'm just writing my black wax right up this crevice right here. I'll put this down when I'm done so you can see it better.
trying to hold this with my leg and <laughs> I just got my brush on. There it is. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of soften this out with a different brush. Just kind of lightly swirling the wax into my paint. And then I'm just going to wipe back a little bit of the excess and it just gave me this nice little bit of dark line. So I used three different products for that. They all basically did a little bit of the same thing in this case. I can darken it with my Dixie Dirt with a little bit of the wax. I can darken it with my um, paint in a darker color or I can darken it with a dark wax. And I get the same like shaded effect with all three products. So if I put this down, you can kind of see how I grunged up up here. I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit, just buff a little bit off. You buff off. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. But that's really pretty. So I didn't blend anything. I didn't blend anything. I swirled a little bit of paint in down here. Um, with using a darker color, I used a little bit of waxes, but I can get these soft shaded effects using a lot of other products too. Um, and then you just want to consider, like with the Dixie Dirt, is now do I need to seal because I added another product over top and I want to protect that. So even though you don't need to seal the silk paint, if you're going to put a transfer over the top, that would be another thing. You want to seal because you're sealing for the transfer. Um, if I put dirt over top, I want to seal because I'm sealing for the dirt. You know, you want to protect those, those finishes. All right, so do you guys feel more confident on doing some more decorative things with silk? I just stuck my fingers. And in how's the wear? It wears really, 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 really well. It wears really well. And probably, um, you know, I usually seal my, my chalk mineral paint. I would not feel like I needed to seal this. It's got a beautiful low sheen, so I would compare it. The closest I would compare it to is an eggshell finish. If you're looking at interior paint finishes from a hardware store. <laughs> It's the closest to eggshell. She says, keep going. You have more time. <laughs> Do you see me? Clock Your eyes myself? in the sky. I always worry because I either tend to talk too much and go too long or it's not long enough. Okay, so I'm, put, I'm just going to go back to this front and put a base coat on here too. So kitchen cabinets, yeah. tables, things like that. This paint is ideal for kitchen cabinets. That's Those are the things this paint is really going to shine at because most people do not blend their kitchen cabinets. That's a heck of a job. <laughs> I've had a few people ask me, have you ever blended a kitchen? I'm like, uh, uh, the last kitchen I did was 30 doors and drawers. Do I want to blend and that was 30 just doors and drawers? One color. Yeah. yeah with one, no, I don't. So, um, kitchen cabinets, bathroom vanities, because it's got that mold and uh, mildew resistance. You can seal it. That's completely optional. That's totally up to you. If you want more, it wipes really well, which gives you a nice wear. But if you want more sheen than that, you can give it a different sheen with one of the clear coats. Sanding after dry. It sands really well. So let's find a spot on here. Um, some of these type of paints with the um, heavy acrylic in them want to pill. I'm going to sand just a little edge on here. So if I wanted to distress, I'm just going to use my surf prep rad pad that I use for prep. Kind of wish I didn't have wet paint on here because I'm going to yeah. get dust into it. I'm going to pull this drawer out. What? I know. That's next level. You can distress this. It actually distresses really well. This is one coat of paint on here. So two coats would probably have a little more res resistance. But I can still distress edges. So. If you've used a competing brand that has a similar makeup as this, they pill. They don't distress. They uh, they come off in little chunks almost. And this does not do that. So you can still distress your silk. So a lot of these decorative finishes that you want to get, yeah, it's not going to shine at blending, but there's no reason you can't do all this other stuff. I'm just going along this one edge here. Curveball. Okay. Now, I also I'm going to point out another thing, and then uh, and then I'll use and then the I can throw a curveball. Yeah, me first. Okay. <laughs> me first, <laughs> then you. Um, I'm sanding at this with sandpaper. Okay. Get it. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. If you want to do a scratch test on this, I can't wear my fingernail over something. It makes me cringe. Me too. That's something I can scratch it with. You can do scratch tests on this. It's not going anywhere. This is one coat of paint that I did yesterday. This is a, put a putty knife. 
Okay, I'm not taking my paint off. It's, I mean, it's not sealed at all. That's one coat of paint done yesterday. So you have that option of distressing and you can see even doing that, I have to work this a little bit. Did you put a link um, for purchasing any of this in the video? Okay, yes. So the link at the top of the post, let's talk about how you get this. Like I said, it's only available at your Dixie Bell retailers right now. So I have a link in the post. You can go to that link and you can use the find a retailer function. Um, and you can find an elite retailer. They're categorized on the website. If they have elite in front of them, it means that they carry the silk paint. Okay, not every retailer has it right now. Only the elite retailers do. So you can use that link, find your elite retailer. If they're not close to you or you don't want to drive to them, most of them ship. Most of them ship. So go to that retailer. You can contact them directly and most of them will ship it to you too. Okay, so that's how you're going to get it right now. You have to find your elite retailer. Um, as far as the other products we use tonight, like the wax, the dirt, um, the brushes, things like that, you can find on the Dixie Bell website right now. But the paint itself, the silk paint, you have to find your local retailer. And that's what the link above is for. It has a find your retailer function. What was the darker paint you used? Um, this is Hampton Olive is the olive color and Black Sands is the dark gray, is the dark gray color. So if I show you these together, put this lid back on. These are a great combo. I feel like Black Sands, you could really, we did that kind of dark shading effect with it. And I feel like you could use Black Sands is going to be really universal for shading with on any of the colors. If you wanted to do a light shading on some of the light blues or, or a gray would be really pretty with this, like um, Baja Gray or Wharf are two other grays you could put with this, but I like it with the Hampton Olive. Now, painting a floor with a stencil or anything like that, sure. what do you think? Sure. It's, Have at it's it? super durable. Just make sure you prep it right, because if you're painting a floor, you're probably painting over a non-porous surface maybe, like linoleum or vinyl. Um, you need to put slick stick down first. Okay, you want it to grip, you want that to last. If you're gonna put that time into it, prep your surface right. It doesn't have a gripping primer in it. You need to put slick stick down underneath that, okay? Otherwise, um, you know, if you've got a factory finish, scuff sand it and clean it well, okay? So I'm gonna finish these up. I'm actually gonna make a video on these. You guys, if you don't already, go follow me on YouTube. I actually have a brand new start to finish tutorial coming out tomorrow on YouTube. I'm super excited about. It's going to cover the basics with the chalk mineral line, getting a really smooth, clean finish with the chalk mineral line. Um, so go follow me on YouTube at Brushed by Brandy, and that premieres tomorrow at noon. Um, and then I'll put a, a full video out when at, on the finish for these two. You guys will get to see them when they're done. So go follow me on YouTube if you don't already. Um, I'll be out of Facebook jail tomorrow, and then I'll talk to you. Right now, I'm just ignoring you completely. <clears throat> It's been suggested that next time we wear orange jumpsuits. I should have. The orange is not my color. It makes my skin look too red. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come. They can't see me it shaking my head. Me, my, like my Dixie Bell flannel does. Yeah. <laughs> my swag. I really don't look that good in orange, though. Well, that's good. I'll <laughs> let the I'm county know. Pale and red. Yeah. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off. This was fun tonight. I hope you guys feel more comfortable using the silk paint. Any questions, don't message your retailers. We're all going through heavy, yeah, tra thanks, Peggy. heavy training on this. We've all been using the product, so it's really exciting. Um, but I'm going to pop off. I'll be, li I'll be uh, live with you next Thursday again if you want to come paint something else. And um, follow me on YouTube. All right, good night, guys. Happy weekend.